Hello Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan A, and I'm here with the 12.18 mid-patch update. We'll be going over the updated tier list for all five roles and follow up on some balance changes from the patch. But before we jump into things, I want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get started on the tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. In the 12.18 patch rundown, we talked about how Maokai's nerves probably wouldn't hurt too bad, and we were right. A couple of his close matchups where the extra healing made a big difference are definitely harder to play now, but for the most part, he's still a reliable pick. He can still snowball surprisingly hard for a tank, and in teamfights, he's a disruptive frontliner that does just a bit too much damage. The top lane meta has shifted in Swain's favor so much that he's moving all the way up to the S tier. Swain's scaling is just so ridiculously strong for team fighting that his tier placement entirely comes down to how easily he can make it through the laning phase. That's why he's been firmly rooted in the OP tier as both a mid laner and bot laner. There are little to no counters to him in those roles. Now that his top lane meta is mostly just tanks and juggernaut instead of bruisers, it's pretty easy for him to survive the laning phase and scale up to carry later on. Auction drops down to the A tier. He's basically right on the other side of the coin from Swain. Auction actually does better the more bruiser heavy the meta is. He does a great job of shutting those guys down, and once they're behind, they're pretty useless until way, way later on into the game. But most of our S and OP tier champions right now can either fight back against his early game bullying attempts, or can at least survive the laning phase and be more useful later, even with a bit of a deficit. Kled moves up to the A tier. As a lot of his tougher skill matchups have gotten weaker in the top lane over time, he's become a reliable blind pick that can at least hold his own against most of the strong picks. That being said, his carrying later on does leave a bit to be desired, so he can't really quite make it to the S tier. Now, let's take a look at Darius. Something really important to keep in mind with this tier list is that it isn't just a measure of how hard a champion can carry games. Consistency matters a lot too. A super fed Darius can absolutely decimate a game, but he's pretty prone to being shut down by jungle ganks and even has some pretty hard skill matchups. He ends up not being all that reliable. Basically, Darius can hard carry to win. He can 1v9 games harder than tanks for most of the other juggernauts, but of course, over the hundred of games, you'll likely win more overall with the other, higher tiered options. Similar to Darius, Camille has a really high ceiling for just how hard she can carry games, but she can have a lot of trouble actually reaching the point where she's strong enough to do that. That's especially true in the middle elos. You're just not going to be finding the challenger level mechanics that you need to consistently carry with her in the average gold to plat player. While Udyr jungle is doing super well post readjustment this patch, in the top lane, things aren't quite the same. The mindless AP tank build is just pretty mediocre now, and his AD build is strong, but is very scaling oriented. Hence, it works well in the jungle, where you can just pick and choose your PvP interactions. In the top lane, he just ends up getting slapped around and falls so behind that you really don't get the chance to play in most matchups. So, we'll be putting him in the C tier here. Rumble and Gameplay both get promoted to the C tier. As per usual, let me give a disclaimer that moving up to the C tier from the D tier doesn't mean a champion is suddenly worth picking. Both of these guys have a really good matchup here and there, but being in the C tier means that they're overall pretty weak and or are hard to execute, and there's always another option that would be more useful. Taking their places in the D tier are Gragas and Akali. Even in the best of situations, these are basically never a good pick. The top lane meta is just full of champs that can run them over, and later on, when you're behind, neither champion can provide anything useful to the team. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We'll be promoting Fiddlesticks back up to the OP tier. We say it all the time, but if you want an example of a true elo flating champion, here it is. Plenty of junglers are farm-heavy champs that focus on carrying later, but none net consistent results quite like Fiddlesticks. His ultimate gives guaranteed kills when he gank, and once you reach the mid and later stages of the game, he can pretty much solo wipe the entire team. We're moving Shaco up to the S tier. This is specifically assuming that you go AP Shaco. AP Shaco is two feasts for famine, and would go somewhere between the A and B tier. AP Shaco, on the other hand, is pretty flexible and always good. Even when you're not fed, the focus is on disruption and damage over time, not big bursts of damage, so you're always still useful. With Zanyos in your ultimate, you can even be a form of pseudo-engage. As we talked about in our patch rundown, Nocturne's nerfs haven't really done a lot. They were enough to bring him down to the S tier, but he's still a super solid option, especially when the enemy team is full of squishy, easy to pick off targets. We'll be moving Volibear down to the S tier. He's still a super valuable pick with good early dueling, decent ganks, and dives that have next to no counterplay, while filling the slot of being a very beefy frontliner in later fights. Honestly, when we move sub between the S and OP tiers, it doesn't really mean much. In most cases, OP tier picks are just slightly more consistent or have slightly higher carry potential. Shivana and Amuma are also joining Volibear in the S tier. Again, really good champions with a lot to bring to the team. There's just a gap between them and the champions at the top of the top. Zack, on the other hand, is coming up to the S tier. 
He's been on a pretty bumpy ride in the tier list lately, going up and down from the OP tier to B tier, and right now, he's definitely on the upswing. If it wasn't for his slow start, he would definitely be an OP champion. You just need some points in his E for that extra range to be able to start pressuring the lanes hard. We'll be keeping Hecarim in the B tier for now. Statistically speaking, Hecarim is doing overall really bad after those nerfs, but there's some nuance to it. Much like we talked about for Scion, Hecarim's stats change a lot depending on the mythic that you build on him. Sunderer is his most popular mythic by a lot, but it tanks his stats a ton, with his win rate being around a 46 to 47%. When you go for Trinity Force or Eclipse, he wins between 50 and 51% of the time. So assuming that you build him the right way, Hecarim is still at least a viable pick with a ton of snowball potential. That being said, he's too Feast for Famine to be considered one of our highest tiers. We were worried that Kane's Nurse's patch may not be enough to bring him down, but they actually hurt him quite a bit. We'll be moving him down to the B tier for now. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. We'll be moving Brad all the way up to the OP tier. He's somewhat of an off meta pick, so when he first had his spike and performance a while back, we were cautious about moving him up the list. With a relatively low amount of games to go off of, sometimes a champion just looks pretty good by pure luck. But he's been doing well for quite some time now, so we feel pretty confident in saying that he's earned this promotion. He is a really overbearing laner, with the ability to both shove waves and poke out your opponent at the same time. Unlike a lot of other lane bullies, he scales super well, and is arguably even better late than he is early on. Seth's recent buffs push him up to the point where he's no longer just a strong counter to certain melee champions mid. He's a super safe blind pick, able to very easily play into pretty much anything the enemy team will throw at you. So we're moving him up to the OP tier as well. Morgana moves down to the A tier. She'll always bring in pretty consistent results and always have a decent impact, but that impact isn't enough to hard carry when everybody else on the team isn't doing so hot. That's a trait that we think is important for a champion to have in our two highest tiers. Echo wasn't doing so well recently, so we brought him down to the C tier, but it looks like it was just a fluke in his numbers. It looks like he's doing well enough again that we're going to be promoting him to the B tier. He's almost doing well enough to even make the A tier, but for now, we'll layer on the side of caution and put him in the lower tier. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. In high elo, Miss Fortune is feeling the nerfs quite a bit. She's somewhere still between the upper end of A tier and the lower end of S tier, but she's definitely not the end-all be-all god of ADCs like before. But in the middle and lower ranks, you can barely tell that she's been nerfed. She's still putting up pretty good numbers, and is still easily the best traditional marksman out there, so she keeps her spot in the OP tier. We'll be moving Jin up to the S tier. There really isn't much to explain here. He's just one of those champions that bounces up and down the higher tiers on the list, as we see a slight meta shift here and there. Either way, he's always somewhere between good and really good, so it's never really a bad time to main him. Like MF, Ash's changes are really only showing results in higher elos, and Diamond Plus, she's a contender for best marksman in the game. But down here in the middle range, she's just a bit above average. To finish things off, we have our supports. Nami moves up to the S tier. Out of all the champions in the Enchanter class, she's by far the best bet if you want to play to win the lane. Her W is such a simple yet powerful ability, allowing you to both poke your opponents and provide sustain for you and your ADC. Once you have some points in it, it really starts to hit hard, with just 2 or 3 casts being enough to get most squishy foes close to half HP. With such a strong laning phase, it just makes sense that she just doesn't quite scale as hard as somebody like Sona or Janna does for 5v5s, but she's still pretty useful out of the lane too. Her ultimate is kind of slow, so it's not exactly the best go button in fights, but it works perfectly well as a follow up to an ally's engage or even your bubble. It can also work as a disengage tool when the enemy team is the one starting the fight. Her passive and E can also be really helpful to help enable allies, giving ADCs more cutting power and divers better sticking power. Zack's support has been up and down the tier list over the past several patches. With his lowish amount of games, it's hard to tell if his fickle performance is from too small of a sample size or meta shifts, but either way, for now we're promoting him to the A tier. Bard really gives you a lot of playmaking ability, with his only real limit being the pilot's creativity. That being said, the average player in the middle elos aren't exactly going to make challenger level plays all the time, so Bard and Plat and Gold are usually kind of mid. That being said, you also have to rely on your teammates to be able to solo lane when you go ahead and roam, so we're moving him down to the B tier. Pi can have a pretty huge influence if you start popping off early. He's potentially a deadly kill lane support, and his roams can allow for you to put a lot of pressure on the rest of the enemy team. However, being an assassin means that he's pretty feast for famine, so he also moves down to the B tier. Ash is another champion that we're demoting to the B tier. In theory, everything about Ash support sounds good. She has pretty strong poke and pretty good DPS in the early laning phase. Her ultimate gives a way to force all lins and helps set up jungle ganks, and her hogshot utility gives your team a lot more info on the enemy jungle. And out of lane, she's just a pick machine with her ultimate having such low cooldown. But either way, the stats don't lie. She's still a decently popular pick, but still has a pretty mediocre win rate. And that about wraps things up for our 12.18 mid-patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.